Hey there folks, welcome to Spectrum Pulse. We talk about music, movies, art and culture, and this, it's Billboard Breakdown. I don't remember. No, if you can't tell, I'm not really happy about this. Really, if you consider the long term, nobody should be happy about this week, where every single song from Drake's album Scorpion impacted the Hot 100. That means 22 new arrivals from that album alone, which broke all kinds of records for Drake and surely cements his dominance in popular culture. But does it? Really? I've seen more critics pan the record than praise it, and not receive backlash for doing so, and when you hear that Spotify is having to issue refunds for paying customers for the Scorpion spam- oh, I'm sorry, custom graphics packages that of course Spotify made out of the goodness of their hearts, and then all the premium playlist placement that surely wasn't paid for by the label directly, or otherwise we'd have the modern version of Payola, right? But the ugly truth is that Drake might be the one who suffers the worst from this out in the long run. Cultural overexposure is still very much a thing, and considering the goodwill he still had from Nice For What, you have to wonder if he'd been better off just holding back a little bit, especially when the product is overwhelmingly mediocre at best. Hell, be even becoming the quintessential silent majority act, it does not look all that good for him if he's overexposed. But we still do have our top 10 to deal with whatever's left of it. Yeah, when seven of your ten songs in the top ten are from Drake and almost entirely driven off of on-demand streaming, it kind of makes you wonder what there even is to say here. I will say that I'm not surprised that Nice For What by Drake went back to number one. It's not the strongest on streaming as a whole, but it does have solid radio, which does matter enough to keep a song like Non-Stop by Drake confined at number two. Good. Then we got a short break from Drake thanks to I Like It by Cardi B featuring Bad Bunny and J Balvin at number three. And make no mistake, even despite not being able to compete in streaming this week, it still has huge sales and real radio traction. It'll likely be back at number one sooner rather than later. And on a similar note, as I predicted, God's Plan by Drake rebounded to number four, mostly getting as high as it did thanks to lingering radio that even now is kind of dripping away. But again, when the streaming fades, I predict Girls Like You by Maroon 5 featuring Cardi B to rebound beyond number five where it is right now. The sales are huge and the radio gains, they are not slowing down. Then we've got four more Drake songs that you can rank by their streaming position. In My Feelings at number six, I'm Upset at number seven, Emotionless at number eight, and Don't Matter to Me with the sample from the late Michael Jackson at number nine, rising above the streaming deficiencies thanks to decent sales. When the majority of these fall out of the top ten in the next week or two, I would put money on this actually sticking around, and I'll have words about that in a bit. Finally, because not even streaming world changes can stop it, Sad by XXXTentacion held on to number Number 10, almost entirely thanks to the YouTube video and the sales. Thanks, America. That's on you. But as I've always said, the real damage from the album bomb comes a lot lower. So let's take a look at our losers and dropouts. And oh my god, it was ugly this week. Let me put this in perspective. Just this week in the list of established songs that are gone, you've got Plug Walk by Rich the Kid, right off the gains. Rockstar by Post Malone featuring 21 Savage. Heaven by Kane Brown. Havana by Camila Cabello featuring Young Thug. New Rules by Dua Lipa and Wait by Maroon 5. And then there's the songs that are likely denied year and slot thanks to Drake, like Dura by Daddy Yankee and Power Glide by Ray Shrimmer and Juicy J. Hell, with the dropout of Walk It Talk It, which will make the year end list with Migos, Drake is literally cannibalizing his own success. And that also happened with our losers. All 34 of them. Well, let's just focus on Drake at the moment, eating himself alive with Look Alive with Blockboy JB falling to 44, and Yes Indeed with Lil Baby going to 26. Then there are the gains that are abruptly cut short, like Tequila by Dan and Shade to 34 or Mercy by Brett Young to 64, or even a return for Big Bang by YG featuring 2 Chainz, Big Sean, and Nicki Minaj to 67. Hell, it was a bad week for Nicki Minaj as a whole, with Ball for Me with Post Malone forced to 74, Bed with Ariana Grande continuing down to 81, and Chun-Li forced down to 82. Also not a good week for Kanye West, with Yikes continuing down to 92, and All Mine wrenched down to 83, and XXXTentacion, he was not spared here either, with Moonlight falling to 47, Changes going to 55, the Remedy for a Broken Heart, Why Am I So In Love hitting 98, Jocelyn Floor is going to 68, and Everybody Dies In Their Nightmares crashing down to 91. But really, 
it was bad for everybody, and the change to the streaming rules did not exactly make it better, so let's just rattle these off. Lucid Dreams by Juice World went to 16. Meant to be by BB Rex on 4, George Line hit 22. Better Now by Post Malone hit 24. Perfect by Ed Sheeran sputtered to 29. Friends by Anne Marie and Marshmello hit 33. Ape Shit by The Carters crashed down to 43. Be Careful by Cardi B failed at 48. Back to You by Selena Gomez hit 49. This Is America by Childish Gambino crashed to 50. I Like Me Better by Loeb sputtered to 52. Tibote by all those reggaeton artists I don't want to name hit 61. All Girls Are the Same by Juice World hit 60. One Number Away by Luke Combs hit 65. Young Blood by Fast Seconds of Summer crashed to 66. Freaky Friday by Lil Dicky and Chris Brown went to 72. Not Falling Fast Enough. Esked It by Lil Pump hit 88. Japan by Famous Dex hit 96. And I Lived It by Blake Shelton somehow held on at 100. And even with all that, we still have gains and returning entries. Yeah, that's what happens when you change the streaming rules and have to rebalance them accordingly on the same week of an album, Mom. So you get songs like Mini Asia by React featuring Ozuna and Wise and returning to 97. Or Downtown's Dead by Sam Hunt coming back at 94. Or Cry Pretty by Carrie Underwood returning to 87. Or most bizarrely, Don't Go Breaking My Heart by the Backstreet Boys back at 84. And while we don't really have that many gains, and I already talked about I'm upset and I don't want to talk about about it anymore we got two and they both come from the more asinine side of country with take back homegirl by chris lane featuring tori kelly rising to 79 and life changes by thomas rett up to 75 off the debut so we have those to look forward to when drake falls up and these guys go up the charts but before we get to the avalanche new entries 27 of them, only 5 not from Drake. I want to stress that there was a credible number of people who wanted me just to avoid Drake entirely this week. Seriously, I took a poll on Twitter with a fair number of people responding, and the option that won out was for me just to skip him entirely. And considering I already spent 16 minutes reviewing the album, I am well within my rights to do that, and I wouldn't feel bad doing it. But at the end of the day, it just wouldn't feel right if he didn't get his due, even if said due comes from streaming chart manipulation, and you all know that that's true. So yeah, for each Drake entry, he's gonna get it. He will get one sentence per song. I don't want to put you all through so much of what I went through. I don't want this episode to be that boring. So all right, let's start off with number 99, Growing Pains by Alessia Carr. And I can't pains are keeping me up at night. You know it's not really a great sign that the song I was most interested in coming out this week was from Alessia Cara. Okay, that's not really fair. I wish she was no more for here and wild things than Scarce to Your Beautiful. And she's one of the Lord wannabes in which I actually saw a lot of potential for growth when I reviewed her debut album back in 2015. And honestly, I mostly like what she's doing with her lead-off single for her sophomore album. Most because she's doubling down on the self-awareness in her writing and realizing that she now has to live in a world where her music and art has actually had some consequences. Especially as she acknowledges her own temperamental nature and how there might be lingering notes of hypocrisy in her empowerment messaging, especially as she really can't run away from it. Can somebody put Kanye on this message? I think he could do to hear this himself. And I really, I appreciate the frank maturity in a lot of Leslie Cara's messaging, even if I do think the hook feels a shade undercooked overall. And the song ends rather abortively. You could probably afford another hook there. But that ties into my larger issue with the song as a whole. If you've got just one pulsating low-end synth and overweight percussion line without a lot of melody, it doesn't quite show off a lot of color and instrumental dynamics, no matter how many faded vocal overdubs you layer in. I don't know, it's not bad. Actually, I kind of like it a fair bit, but like with most Alessia Cara songs, I find myself wishing I could like it a lot more. Good, but not great. Number 93, Hotel Key by Old Dominion. So we've got a new single from Old Dominion now. The first of three new country songs to break onto the Hot 100 this week. And look, I've not been all that fond of this group. Despite decent hooks, their production tends to sound stiff and sterile, and their lyrics are average at best. And yet, this seems to buck against most of those assumptions, and winds up being close to one of the first Old Dominion songs I can actually come close to liking. The drums, they sound more organic, there's more groove here. The piano embellishments, they complement the rollicking guitar grooves on the hook, and kind of fit in with the somewhat seedy vibe the 
Morgan that kind of works for the one night stand in the lyrics, which is left implied rather than more outright emphasized in the writing, which is a nice touch of restraint I can actually respect. So yeah, this is actually a really decent song. I'll take it. Number 86, Sunrise, Sunburn, Sunset by Luke Bryan. Just sunrise, sunburn, sunset, repeat. Sunrise, sunburn, sunset, repeat. And it looks like we might be two for two when it comes to decent enough country songs. I remember talking briefly about this track when I reviewed Luke Bryan's album late last year, mostly for highlighting its warm inoffensiveness as a positive, coasting by on breezy beach vibes and Luke Bryan's natural charisma. And going back to it now, that's still mostly true. Yeah, the percussion is faker and blockier and it clearly came from a drum machine on the verses and the cymbals are really badly layered. Seriously, for as much of a Nashville institution as Luke Bryan is, his material should be way better mixed at this point, but for the sort of lightweight bro country storytelling that seems weaponized for summer country radio, I'll be honest, it's fine. I'll take this over any number of awful Luke Bryan songs that I have covered over the past five years, so this is tolerable. Next, number 76, Kiss Somebody by Morgan Evans. street in the summer rain, if you're wishing you were with somebody, cause you don't want to go home when it's closing time, if you want to kiss somebody. Baby, I got somebody in mind. So I've ranted about nepotism in Nashville before, really in the music industry as a whole, but with Kiss Somebody, it seems like we have an inverse of what you would usually see. Because while Morgan Evans' previous couple projects have gone absolutely nowhere, seriously, he was putting out records as far back as 2007, he had a major label deal, I gotta wonder if the fact that he's married to Kelsey Ballerini hasn't helped just goose his career just a little bit. Hell, he released this single in mid-July of last year, and it's only now charting on the Hot 100. And sadly, I can see why it took so long. Somebody needs to tell me why they mix the snaps on these weird intervals opposite the drums, or drown the guitar in reverb, or suffocate the vocal line in these weirdly synthetic vocal multi-tracking, which only gets more blatant and higher pitched before the bridge. Seriously, the production is shockingly messy, and even if Morgan Evans has real charisma, and I would argue he does, he's still stuck with an underwhelming post-breakup hookup song with lyrics printed from the Nashville songwriting generator. In other words, you know what? I'll stick with Kelsey Ballerini. Thank you very much. Number 63, Karma by Queen Nyjah. I'm still a little bit amazed that Queen Nyjah is notching a second hit. And look, I get it, YouTube can be kind of weird in what blows up, but this notched considerable sales as well, so I was curious if this was going to be any good before we get an avalanche of Drake that's coming. And really, it's a pretty decent refutation of what's coming from Drake, given how that's a slick, piano-driven R&B song with a solidly layered trap groove along with some much smoother production than what she previously had on Medicine. And I mostly like a lot of the content too. A kiss off to a guy who was an unappreciative dick and it was negging her and I was at the very least somewhat emotionally abusive and now he's gonna get what's coming to him and she's smart enough to show enough details to highlight how much his words did touch her which is a nice touch in emphasizing that emotional drama so as a whole yeah, this is a good song. And while I'm not sure how long it'll really last, it did break through a tidal wave of mediocre R&B, so yeah, that's promising. But on that note, number 57, March 14th by Drake. That shit is in stone, sealed and signed. She not my lover like Billie Jean, but the kid is mine. Sandy used to tell me all it takes is one time and all it took was one time. Shit, we only met two times, two times. And both times were nothing like the new times. Now it's rough times. So we're starting off with one of the better songs, the confessional moment where Drake finally appears like he's going to take responsibility for his life and his child, and then he blows it by ignoring that child's mother and singing over a boys to men sample that reminds me of much better music that I'd rather be listening to. Next, number 56, Final Fantasy by Drake. I want to give you a place I want to get to. Neck grab, head grab, arch back, heart attack, cardiac. I need it nasty like like evil angel, like vivid, you know nasty like how they give it, you know, 
I'm struggling to comprehend the utter waste of a song with this title, not only not sampling any of the video games, but doubling down the sort of emotional manipulation that I think would be beyond even most Final Fantasy protagonists and antagonists. Pushing out she should wear no makeup even after the beat switch you then start flexing? I think that's my limit break. Next, number 51, Ratchet Happy Birthday by Drake. Tonight we celebrate, seems like times out of our control. It's a celebration. Uh -oh. Look, you know what this is. He wanted to make a pandering birthday song. And the fact that it charted so low thanks to the really slapdash sample layering, the gross auto-tune, the embarrassing lyrics, and the blocky groove, it makes it very clear that 50 Cent still has the hip-hop birthday jam on lock. Yeah, even 15 years later. And that's kind of sad in its own way. Number 42, Finesse by Drake. Yo, Finesse, he can no. You stay on my mind. You know, when Bruno Mars and Cardi B gave a song this title this year, it had groove. It was fun. And when Drake does it, he saved it for an underwritten bassy slog where he wants to screw sisters and complain about Fashion Week in New York. Very telling. Number 41, After Dark by Drake featuring Static Major and Ty Dolla Sign. Unsurprisingly, Ty Dolla Sign is the best part of this song. And Drake somehow manages to sample Maxwell and the Lake Static Major and make neither of them sound sensual or appealing. That's a special kind of failure. Number 38, Peak by Drake. Oh, you gonna make me turn up. Yes, Drake, you did hit your peak. I'd argue that three years and too many songs ago, and your passive-aggressive concern trolling for Georgia Smith is creepy and does not match that ugly, grainy synth you chose, but more on that later. This is still not good. Number 37, That's How You Feel by Drake. I know you wanna vacate to a place where you could take pictures, post on Insta, your friends say they miss you, but they don't really miss you. You know, for as much damage as you did to Nicki Minaj's chart positions, Drake, she deserved more than the half-hearted samples on this song where you tried to isolate a girl from her friends telling her that they don't care about her. Also, Nicki Minaj brings more personality to this song than you brought on the majority of your entire album. Next, number 36, Is There More by Drake. Only begging that I do is me begging your pardon. Only trying that I do is me trying the hardest. Only problems I do are mad problems with profit. Only lying I do is lying out in the tropics. Only crying I do is crying from laughing about it. It's almost prophetic, the fact that Drake titled a song like this at the halfway point of the double album, especially when we're not even halfway through the runtime and the melodic sample sounds like a muffled and failing hairdryer. He's gotta be trolling at this point, right? Cause this isn't good. Number 32, Jaded by Drake. Most of these things I don't wanna say. I wanna be around while you're chasing. You wanna hit me up when you make it. Lovely. More ugly, grainy synths. More Drake passive aggressively concerned trolling Georgia Smith and actively drawing attention to the difference in their ages. Yeah, no. Not even Ty Dolla Sign can save this. One of the worst tracks on Scorpion. This sucks. Let's move on. Number 30, Blue Tint by Drake. I watch the ice get there. Now that she sink or swim She had an attitude in the summer But she being nice again Double my price again Top of the charts, back in their hearts Nigga, he strikes again, whoa Some niggas bitter with life and they hate me They wanna put knife in my ribs, whoa Never have I looked forward to an uncredited future guest presence more and the fact that he's stuck with a dull refrain as Drake bitches about how a girl's now back in his life and he's screwing her but contemplating dropping her again? Yeah, women who like Drake. How exactly are you gonna defend this one? I'm curious. Number 28, Summer Games by Drake. I'd rather know ahead of time You said I love you too fast so much for that, cause summer just started and we're already done. 
So I'll admit I kind of like the Wiry Synth choice. Which Drake promptly ruins by using the entire song to passive-aggressively contern troll a girl around her social media use, which he excuses by saying that she said I love you first. And then he chops his voice into fragments to fill out the other half of the song. Fun stuff. Number 27, Sandra's Rose by Drake. Price tags on making a world feel some. They don't have enough to satisfy a real one. Mary Carter couldn't even get the deal done. Niggas scared to come towards us, gotta run from us. Louisville, hush money for my young gunners. Yeah, it's a good sample from DJ Premier, and Drake's riding it pretty well, but I got three questions. One, did you really take shots at Amber Rose's slut walk movement? Because that's telling. Number two, did you seriously try to call out Charlemagne's skin condition, even despite all the promo that he's thrown your way? And number three, did you seriously try healing crystals? I mean, seriously? Number 21, 8 out of 10 by Drake. Drizzy by the drop, the game is in disarray. I tell you, hear me out, but we both know end of the day. Your sister is pressing play, your trainer is pressing play. Your wifey, your wifey, your wifey, your wifey. I am really getting sick of Drake sampling Marvin Gaye, saying that he's settling into his role as the good guy while taking awkward subliminal shots at Kanye and Pusha T, and then ending the song with a You Mad sample from Plies. We know who's really mad, Drake. You just can't ever really admit that. Number 20, Talk Up by Drake featuring Jay-Z. Hey. Hey. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So odd mixing and volumishes aside, like from the NWA sample that Drake's using here, Jay-Z saves the song with his dismissive but effective bragging. I like how he called out Trump. But as I said in the review, I question the X and Zimmerman line that ends his verse. And I can't help but wonder how that implication might linger going forward. Also, the song's not that good. Number 18, Can't Take a Joke by Drake. Alright, Drake's flow is good. I kind of like how the cocking of the gun was integrated into the beat. But, Drake, buddy, when you try to blow off things by saying that folks can't take a joke over this sort of production, and with those sort of veiled threats in the second verse, it's not them who look insecure. Just saying. Number 17, Survival by Drake. broken in pieces, but there's more in my possession. There's a whole lot in my possession. Who do you really love? Well, that's short of being questioned. My Mount Rushmore is me with four different expressions. Who's giving out this much return on investment? Honestly, it's not a bad intro. Abortive and the synth leads aren't all that impressive, but there are a few hard bars scattered here and there, even if you get the impression that Drake is chopping out what he really wants to say in the editing room. And yet, for some reason, he left that Mount Rushmore line in. Could have cut that one out. Number 14, Elevate by Drake. Baco pass a drug test, we gotta celebrate. I'm in better way, thinking how to make. All this happened for myself and my family. All this happened for myself and my family. There's no way that this is real, man, it can't be. There's one half song verse against some admittedly pretty ghostly production, and outside of a modestly catchy hook, what I find most galling is how Drake wants to gaslight the audience into believing that it was God playing favorites that got him to this point, and not backroom label deals with Spotify. But hey, if you know, you know. Number 13, Mob Ties by Drake. Knock you off to pay their ties. They want me gone, but don't know why. It's too late for all that lovey dovey shit. I'm your brother shit. All that other shit. So that's a genuinely great Young Thug impression. And the fact that the song actually managed to turn out pretty damn good, even despite the content of you cowering behind Jay Prince and not really ending Kanye like you said you could, well, all right, the Nas sample helps, but does say a lot, even if this is probably one of the best songs on the album. Number nine, Don't Matter To Me by Drake featuring Michael Jackson. I don't care if the groove is good, or if Drake is using the song for more gross concern trolling. At this point, the Jackson Estate really needs to seal up these Paul Anka sessions. The more they are sampled by anybody who can afford these samples, the worse it gets to Michael Jackson's legacy. But hey, it's only the second time that Drake is grave robbing on this album. That's gotta count for something, right? Number eight, Emotionless by Drake. Don't tell me your favorite song. Don't tell me how you knew it would be like this all along. 
I know the truth is you won't love me until I'm gone And even then the thing that comes after is moving on I can't even capture the feeling I had at first Meeting all my heroes like seeing how magic works So the Mariah Carey sample is really good The rest of the song is half measure shots taken at Kanye Guilt tripping girls for using Instagram And describing how he wasn't hiding his kid from the world He was hiding the world from his kid In other words, Mariah really deserved better Number 6, In My Feelings by Drake So apparently this sloppily mixed and badly scratched song has become a dance meme has become the sleeper hit from Scorpion on the back of an uncredited duo City Girls and a lot of chopped up vocal samples. And if that's not a striking indictment of Drake's artistic approach on Scorpion in 2018, I don't know what this is, because this is not that good. And finally, number two, Nonstop by Drake. So rolly, not a stop. Watch shit, don't never stop. Okay. No jokes here. The fact that the leaden bass line, the trap beat, and some sparse words is all Drake bothered to include as an instrumental behind this lazy as hell brag rap. Look, for the most part, I have blamed Drake for this turgid slog of a double album. I doubt even he would have positioned this nothing of album filter as the breakout song from Scorpion. And you know what? For the most part, that's not on him, that's on you. And that's our week. Hell, I might even do this in future album bombs, practice keeping things brief, even though this will be a living hell to edit and fully assemble. But best and worst, oh, look, I'll give Drake credit where it's due. Mob Ties is probably my favorite song here. Followed by Growing Pains by Alessia Cara. It's not the best thing she's ever dropped, but I see a lot of potential and layers there. I mostly like a lot of the writing on that song. Worst? Yeah, no question. That's going to Jaded by Drake. With this honorable mention, going to be as a tie between Ratchet Abbey Birthday and Blue Tint. Sorry, Future. Can't save enough of that song. And thank God, Big crit didn't take it when he had the chance back for forever's mighty long time last year but next week the fallout for all this mess so stay tuned for that until then i'm mark you're watching billboard breakdown on spectrum pulse and fine i'll hit the dab and i'll see you next time